Well, one way of talking about the phenomenon of hybridity is by relocating the concept of culture, by re-theorizing its relationship to people rather than discarding the concept altogether. Such involves not thinking of culture as something deep down in here, in my gut, but as something that lives up there, above my head. Following this idea in engineering cultures, we talk about cultures as dominant images, as images that challenge us as people. By challenge, I mean that dominant cultural images attribute identities, telling us who we are. For example, women or men. And convey expectations about what things we should do. For example, how we should dress or attitudes we should have. When you shift the location of culture from something that's down here deep in the gut to up there, up above us, in the air, the whole idea of sharedness changes its meaning. Rather than fundamental beliefs and values living in someone's gut, what is shared are dominant images and the challenges these pose. Now importantly, dominance here is a, is a mathematical or statistical concept in the sense of predominance. That is to say, an image becomes dominant by spreading and becoming widely used in a quantitative sense. It hence saturates everyday life. From this point of view, a culture still has members in the sense that they are challenged by the same configuration of images. But what's shared is the challenge, the felt expectations, not the reaction or the result. Hence, a key benefit of this relocated concept of culture is that we no longer have to assert or assume that people are the same, quite the contrary. For example, I have found that when American students apply the traditional concept of culture in thinking about, say, um, engineering in Japan, they tend to assume that all Japanese people are alike. Indeed, the Japanese are almost exactly the inverse of Americans. Where Americans are all about the individual, the Japanese are all about the group. Applying this revised concept of culture, students are able to assert that what all Japanese share is the challenge of dominant Japanese images, while at the same time avoiding the expectation that Japanese people are similar to one another or the same. Rather, it now becomes interesting to, to examine how and why Japanese people are in fact different from one another. At the same time, this approach to locating culture means that it's still worthwhile to identify analytically and articulate shared cultural meanings. It's still meaningful to investigate what it means to be Japanese or a Japanese engineer, to identify sets of dominant, even long-standing traditional images. In other words, all the existing research completed under the older idea of culture still works. But from the point of view of this approach, we think of them as meanings that challenge people and then ask further about the people. A second benefit of this shift is that the idea of culture change transforms rather dramatically. For the traditional concept, culture change was difficult to imagine, involving some sort of fundamental shift in meanings. Think, for example, what it might take to transform fundamentally the structure of a linguistic grammar, to revise the grammatical structure of English. Using this revised approach, rather than requiring a fundamental shift in meanings, culture change becomes the conceptually simpler problem of changes up there, changes in dominant images. Culture change becomes a process with quantitative dimensions, a statistical shift in predominance, a spreading of a new image that supplants an old one, rather than a transformation of gut beliefs and values. During various course modules, you will occasionally encounter stick figures, we use stick figures as a way of modeling the problem of culture as dominant images. They provide a vehicle for visualizing how people must deal with configurations of challenges from dominant images. The dominant images are up there, similar to balloons in a cartoon. But rather than illustrating someone's speech or utterances, these balloons illustrate challenges, expectations, or attributions of identity. The implicit arrow points in the opposite direction. 
indicating and carrying the force of a challenge. What now about people? How do we begin to understand and account for differences among people? The main concept we use in engineering cultures to understand and account for differences is a perspective. The argument is that when collections of people are challenged by configurations of dominant images, patterns develop. The ways people, re people react to and grapple with challenges can sometimes be grouped analytically into patterns. One way of identifying such patterns is to characterize the people involved as occupying or holding perspectives. A perspective is a point of view and can live as a framework of thinking. In following people as they respond to dominant images, we might distinguish a framework of thinking we call perspective A from a framework of thinking that we call perspective B. Such illustrates the point that when more than one person is challenged by a given set of dominant images, they need not necessarily follow the same pathways, emerge with the same perspective, or share the same essence. In fact, we can probably assert with some confidence that every pattern also has its exceptions. Identifying patterns is a means toward identifying exceptions. For example, people have been raised in the United States experience a challenge to become, perhaps above all else, autonomous individuals. In reacting to the expectation to be an individual, some people exhibit perspectives that emphasize equality among individuals, what we tend to call the left side of the political spectrum, for example, Democrats. While other people exhibit perspectives that emphasize the freedom of individuals, what we tend to call the right side of the political spectrum, for example, Republicans. These differences are identifiable patterns with lots of individual exceptions. To understand the patterns and the exceptions, in other words, what's actually going on with people, it still helps to articulate and describe the meanings that constitute the cultural challenge of individualism. Furthermore, and this will conclude our introductory discussion of culture as dominant images, the configuration of cultural challenges that people face depend upon how dominant images position them or identify them. The expectations one faces depends upon one's identity. The lives of people involve complex configurations of challenges. Raised in the United States, I face certain challenges. If I am a woman in the United States, I am challenged by certain gender stereotypes. Let's say also that my family is Jewish. I find myself challenged by an additional set of images that interacts in some ways with the challenges I experience because I am a woman and because I was raised in the United States. And then finally, bringing us deep into the heart of engineering cultures, let's say I'm also learning to become an engineer. Engineering cultures is built on the claim that people becoming engineers are challenged by whatever dominant image of engineering is operative in a particular context. From this point of view, as a Jewish American female learning engineering in the United States, certain patterns may be likely to appear in my life as the product of challenges from dominant images that accrue to those positions. Given our emphasis on engineering, we spend considerable time examining challenges from different dominant images of engineering problem solving. We thus talk about challenges particular to Japan or France or Mexico, but only to provide the basis for understanding people you are most likely to encounter, those who are actively becoming hybrids or multiples. As we move from country to country, we explore what it means to be an engineer by asking who's an engineer? What is engineering knowledge? And where are engineers most likely to work?